Hey guys, it's Coach B. Wiley here. I have a segment called Ask Me Wiley, and you know what that means. It means that you ask me your questions and I answer them anonymously. The first one that came up on Kira.com, it says, how long do you wait until sharing your new relationship on social media? I say you wait until you marry. That's what I say. So since you asked me, <laughs> that's what I say. Because when we prematurely share who we're with or who we're dating or who we like on social media, that can screw some things up. It could possibly jinx you if you believe in superstitions like I do. I believe in some of them. So I say you wait until you know that person is solely committed to you, which would at least be six to nine months into the situation and then even before even before you get to that point you have a conversation early on when you know you're going to you're headed the intent is to be with each other that's when you have a social media conversation and you ask them how do they feel about social media and posting each other on social media do they like it do they want to be a part of it because everybody don't like to be posted on social media me personally whoever i'm with you're not going to see them until we are literally married. And I'm not kidding. There's no reason for me to show you on here, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, the guy that I'm with for what? So y'all need to see what he looked like. I mean, what's the point of it? I don't, I don't really understand the point. And so if you're watching this and you're just like, well, I want to show the dude that I'm talking to right now. Well, sis, back up, pump the brakes, green light, don't mean go in this situation. I need for you to get solid on solid ground, on a solid foundation, because if you go doing too much on social media too soon, next thing you know, you got the wipe, the whole Instagram board down. I hate when people do that. Me personally, if it's, it's your Instagram, but me personally, I think that it's just a part of the journey. If you were with this person, you cared about this person, you love this person or like them very strongly, then it's okay to just leave them up. It's just a part of your journey to where you're going. That's just my thoughts on it. But you see, I ain't posted nobody on my stuff because I ain't married yet, okay? So when that happens, that's when I will. So if you're one of those people who are thinking, considering, pondering, wanting to show off who you're with because there's nothing wrong with that. It's just about the right time and having the conversation. Have that conversation first and then move accordingly. And if that person don't want to be on your social media, don't mean that they got something to hide. It just means they don't want to be social on your media, okay? So that was the answer to that question. Let's scroll down because I didn't, I just literally opened my laptop and saw what was on here. Oh, this is, and this is the next question. It's right in a row. Why is it bad to go too fast in a relationship? It's bad because you're moving too fast. Who, who ever said Let's move too fast and then watch what happens. Absolutely not. Typically when you move too fast, your hormones are raging, your hearts are busting out your eyeballs and you're just overly excited. Typically when people move too fast, it's always too good to be true. I had a situation, shoot, almost a decade ago where the guy was trying to take me fast and he was saying, I love you, I think within the first month or so. And that's not natural. It's not natural to tell someone and have genuine, uh, my battery is running low, and have genuine love for someone in like 30 days. Like to me, that's my opinion. So when you, when you move too fast, it is not good. You want to take your time because why are you rushing? If the intent is to be with this person long term, then why do we need to rush? If we're going to be together, we're already together right now. So what are we rushing to do? Like, why would you rush to do something on a job? Are you rushing to learn a bunch of stuff on the job so they can hurry up and rush you into the next position? Absolutely not. You have to stay on that job. You have to prove yourself. You have to show up. You have to come in late sometimes. After hours, you have to do overtime. You have to prove to them that you know what you're doing and that you're responsible and you can hold it down and you can prioritize things. The same things that goes for a relationship. So your job ain't gonna rush you into the next position. So don't rush this person into the bedroom or anything, into your finances or anything in between. So it's not a good thing to be in a rush. How do I keep, I'm just going in order now. How do I keep my distance relationship going? Y'all already know this. Come on now. If you don't watch me, if you haven't, here you go. 
communication that's gonna always be my answer <laughs> if you've been watching me or if you have not communication has always been my answer i don't know why y'all don't want to talk to each other i don't know why people get in long distance relationships and don't even talk when you're in a short distance relationship like in order to keep any relationship popping you gotta be talking the gums have to be bumping so if you're in a long distance relationship and you feel some distance literally and physically metaphorically then you get on that phone and you call tyrone and you have a conversation about the changes that you both can make in order to cut the distance in the communication and get more closer in communication and more open with each other and more consistent all right do, 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 do. all right we're moving on i've been in long how Oh, how do you, <laughs> I've got to read it before I read it out loud. <laughs> how do you lose trust in a relationship? Any, I mean, what, what are your deal breakers? Like a lot of people ask me questions and they don't really give me a lot. Some people just give me something. I'm just like, what am I supposed to do with this? I have questions. How do you lose trust in a relationship? Well, whatever your deal breakers are. If you don't like to be cheated on, lied to, abused, uh, manipulated, uh, put on the back burner, treat it like crap then you're probably gonna lose trust in someone because if they're coming in leading with charm and wit and honesty, or what you think is honesty, and their actions are backing up their words, but then they do a 180 once you get with them and they stop doing the things they were doing before. They stop returning phone calls when they said they would. They quit coming home when they said they would they are liking up a bunch of women's or guys pictures on the internet they're flirty i mean there's many reasons that you can lose trust my thing is what are you going to do when you lose the trust you're going to have a conversation or you're going to write to me and i answer the question and then you do nothing i want you guys when you're writing me these questions i want you because i'm happy to answer them and i do it on my leisure because i love it however don't ask a question. Get the answer. Know it's the answer you need and then do nothing. So if you can't trust the person you with, you don't need to be with them. That means romantically speaking, professionally speaking, personally speaking, or all things in between. I'm on a roll, guys. I got about a few more minutes till I gotta go. It's still my birthday, by the way. It's still June 21st. You'll be seeing this after my birthday, but I changed clothes for y'all, okay? I'm giving very much McDonald's up in here. All right. What do I do when good chemistry in a relationship goes bad? Well, chemistry, I learned this from Judge, Judge Toller. Chemistry is basically just lust. You like him, he like you, y'all like each other. So when the chemistry is gone, that's when you need to just get to know who that person is. You can't float no boat on chemistry, but you can float a boat and hold it down with emotional intelligence, with uh, being emotionally engaged, with being emotionally invested, with being present, with wanting to genuinely get to know this person for who they are, with asking probing questions about their background, how they grew up, their fundamental beliefs, all this stuff. That's what floats the boat. Chemistry don't do nothing. And I know that social media has a lot of people thinking that chemistry floats boats and the more you show, the more men you attract, but that's just simply not true. You might attract them, but are they gonna stay and marry you and commit and be loyal and, and, and not cheat? That's the real question. So when it comes to when chemistry is lost or when chemistry goes bad, what do you mean by bad? Like you were attracted to them and then they lost a bunch of weight, so you're unattracted to them or you were attracted to them, but then they cut all, they, they shaved all their hair off. Like they had hair like mom, but then they shaved it all off like Amber Rose and now you're like, not so much cal it's giving cal you like what do you mean exactly just i don't know but when in chemistry like i said when chemistry is a part of it you got to chemistry is is a cousin to hearts and eyes it's very much related so you want to let that chemistry go and and know and really get into who they are as a person and, and let their character lead the way and if that's good or not so good or if it's bad then that's when you know you got to break off that relationship all right, how to social, hold on, I thought that said something else. Never mind, we're gonna skip to the next one. What can you do for a long distance friend in serious need of potential, potentially life-saving help? You can 
tell them to call help. If you know their parents, I 100% reach out to their parents or any relatives or close friends since they don't, they live, they their long distance friend. I go right to their parents and reach out to their parents. Like I wouldn't go to social media. I go to their parents. Now you can connect with them on social media behind the scenes in the DMs and box, but I go right to their parents and say, hey, this is what's going on with your child. They need help or their significant other or anybody you know that knows them, that is close to them, that cares for them because you can't do anything about it if you're long distance and you can't jeopardize you because if they are in some life-saving things, like what does that even mean? Does it mean they're going to do something to themselves, to unalive themselves? Does it mean that someone's going to do something to unalive themselves? What does that mean exactly? But if it's life-threatening, go right to their significant other and or parents, family, and friends. Do that. All right? All right, we're going to do, I'm, we had 11 minutes right now. Let's see. Oh, this one sounds strange. I just read it real quick in my brain, but I had to click on it to go. All right, look at this one. Why is it that my boyfriend goes to sleep anytime we get into an argument? It could be a simple thing, but he just turns over and falls asleep. And I'm here wondering, why am I here? Girl, now look here. That's just plain disrespect. He's just letting you know off the rip. He don't care what you got to say. And so he's literally going to turn his back on you and snooze. Me and my son have this running joke that we do. I forget where it even started. But it was something we do to where we'd just be talking and we'll be doing an activity. Then all of a sudden we're like... <sighs> Me and him. And it's just so random and we both do it to each other. And it's just so stupid. But it's so funny. But this is nothing funny about this is your man, right? Y'all must have been together for a little while. If y'all spend the night, maybe I even live together. And if he don't have the decency to hear what you got to say, first of all, what you're arguing about. First of all, first of all, what you're arguing about. Because you're not supposed to be arguing. You're supposed to be having some resolution, communicating conversations up in here. So quit arguing. Maybe he tired of arguing. Maybe that's it. Think about you. What part do you play? I'm not saying it's your fault that he turned his back on you because that's just flat out disrespect. However, I am saying if you're arguing, what are you arguing about? What is the root of the problem? What is your delivery? What is your tone, your body language? And why are y'all all always in the bed? Who argues in the bed? Like what? <laughs> Typically you don't be in the bed <laughs> when it's time for an argument. So what exactly are you arguing about? Get down to the bottom of that. And instead of arguing, because I think arguing, I think confrontation, combative, yelling, crazy. Instead of doing that, you want to address what the real issue is and say, hey, you know what? Lately, every time we argue, which I'm not trying to argue with you, I just really want to get down to the resolution of why X, Y, and Z. I'm not understanding why you have the audacity. Don't say audacity. Don't say audacity. Do not say audacity. Don't listen to me on that part. I don't understand why you turn your back on me and just fall asleep. When you do that, and you've done that on numerous occasions, it makes me feel unheard, unseen, disrespected, neglected. And just kind of just like what I have to say doesn't matter. So how can we get down to the bottom of this so you can stop doing that? That's the conversation you have. Because I ain't going to say if it was me, y'all. See, see, I'm toxic. I'm toxic. I'm kidding. I'm not toxic. But I was going to say just joking. If it was me and a dude turned his back on me, we in a complete misunderstanding. I just have to just boot him on out the bed. And now we'll, he would hit his head. He would fall on the floor. He would pass out. But that's not good. Don't do what B. Wiley would do. <laughs> and that was just a joke. But seriously, have that conversation like I just said. And then go from there. Because, because there's nothing funny about someone disregarding their mates, friends, working partners' feelings when they're expressing themselves. However, we have to also be mindful of how we express ourselves when we do engage about something that's bothering us, okay? All right, guys, if you made it this far, thank you very much. It is Coach B. Wiley, and this was Ask B. Wiley, where I answer your questions. If you ever have a question for me, feel free. Go on Cura, Q-U-O-R-A.com. Look up B. Wiley, B. Wiley on Cura, and ask me a question. It'll, of course, be anonymous. I won't use your name unless you, for some reason, want a shout out. But outside of that, put your question down in the comments. You can look me up on Facebook, Instagram, of course, here on YouTube, Twitter, TikTok. Coach B. 
widely. All right, guys. Talk to you later.